Hello, everybody, and welcome to this latest Europe Active uh, webinar, uh, the title of which you should be able to see there, Healthy Lifestyle Promotion. My name is Julian Berryman. I am the uh, director of the Europe Active Professional Standards Committee. Uh, I just need to, before we get into the presentation, just to have a couple of points of admin. You can ask questions, you're on mute. Uh, and, and we can't see you, I'm afraid, but please post your, your questions in the Q&A section at the bottom there. You can just hover over the bar uh, and, and post your questions there. We'll try and get to questions at the end of, uh, at the, end of the presentations. There are three presentations uh, in total, uh, but we will get to those questions. I would direct you, as always, to the COVID-19 page on the, um, on the uh, Europe Active website. Please have a look there, lots of resources, lots of recordings of webinars and other resources that will be useful to you. So as you can see, we, uh, we have a, a number of participants in this webinar, John Van Heel of the New uh, Health Project, Colin Huffman from uh, the UK, John Van Heel is from the Netherlands, as you can see, uh, Alfonso Jimenez from Spain from the GoFit Lab. So we're gonna be talking about uh, a new role perhaps for the uh, for the fitness and physical activity sector so healthy lifestyle promotion this is something that i've been aware of for, for some time that there are a number of different qualifications or standards developing across europe in this area in relation to this new role which i guess is a recognition that that our sector needs to think about a shift a gradual shift to to a repositioning if you like so we, we move towards more of a holistic agenda, a health agenda, where we're addressing not only the, uh, the physical well-being of individuals, but also the social and, uh, and the mental uh, well-being of, of indi individuals out there. And we position ourselves as a sector in such a way that we can be a credible partner to public health and to the health sector in general. So I think, uh, we have two, uh, sorry, three uh, very eminent speakers here who each have been working in this area. Uh, I want to give them as much time as possible to talk. Uh, so, without further ado, we're going to go over to um, John Van Heel in the Netherlands, who's going to talk about his healthy lifestyle promoter role in the New Health Project. Over to you, John. Thank you, Julian. Let me share my screen. And well, there you go. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Nice that you join us. And uh, Julian, thank you for making this possible. My name is John Van Heel from New Health Foundation, but also from uh, uh, EFI Education Organization in the Netherlands. Been busy for uh, a little bit more than 35 years in the industry and um, to uh, get this already going we not talk about one pandemic at this moment but there are a few pandemics going on and what uh, julian talked about maybe it's time that we look uh, to our position as a fitness industry to see what our possibilities are here to uh, to come up with some uh, help in this situation the two three and four are actually uh, uh, non-communicable the non-communicable diseases and the covid is of course communicable so but they call it uh, pandemics anyway because of the size and the development of it so uh, that COVID crisis is actually maybe an unhealthy living crisis instead of just a COVID crisis. And can we work and come up with a one prevention strat strategy? That's the question we asked us in the, in the European project, which is supported by the European Commission, by the European Union. And this COVID is um, uh, a disease, of course, of uh, two, uh, uh, 2020, but unhealthy living crisis is already going on for years, uh, approximately 70 years, and still uh, growing, unfortunately. 
So during the 60, 6 million years of our evolution, actually that is 60 million years, are we as primates, primates are 60 million years on this planet, we conditioned ourselves in the last, in the past 70 years into unhealthy eating, stress, and uh, sedentary species. So a lot has changed in the last 70 years. Some results uh, of this lifestyle we have at this moment, um, this is just on weight gain, the first that we know of uh, measurement was in 1800, 3.6% uh, overweight and obese. And uh, right now, a little bit over 50%. Uh, the REVM, that's the measure organization, the health organization who does the measurements in the Netherlands, they, um, uh, they calculated that in 240, we have 62% uh, of overweight and obese. So this could be, me, myself, we have three children, um, 16, 21, and 24. When they have my age, I'm uh, 57. When they have my age, probably there will be seven to eight, maybe nine of them have overweight or obesity. So, and this is also with diabetic and inactivity that also keeps on growing. So we really have another, three crises going on. So obviously we did not learn to live healthy and we can't and don't teach our children enough about healthy lifestyle and prevention. We can't, uh, uh, let me get back on that in a little bit because that's um, because of nine out of 10 people according to the World Health Organization has a lack of health literacy. So. That means they, they know too little about healthy living to make healthy choices. Uh, so the, the knowledge is really a big problem about healthy lifestyle. So we as a human species and our forefather lived a long time with a healthy fat percentage and a healthy lifestyle and we messed it up in the last 70 years. Is that collateral damage or is there something to learn? So we think and we thought, and that was in 2018, it's time for change. And that's why we started that European project, which I'm going to tell you about. So um, behind that is that the science of healthy living is clear now. There is no question about it that if we follow this science, we will diminish the risk to many diseases for 50% or more. So, and uh, in a few blue zones in the Netherlands, National Geographic did more than 10 years research in these blue zones. They let us see that the results are uh, astonishing. So they live 10 to 15 years longer than us. And we have approximately uh, 19 years of disease at the end of our lives. And in these areas, only three years. So when you calculate that up, then we can, uh, um, we can have a, a 15 to 20 years uh, uh, to win uh, on the quality of life. So looking at the science, we looked, and that's 2018, the combined lifestyle intervention, which is an intervention for people with obesity, that is put out and did by the university in, uh, by university in the Netherlands. And uh, that showed that uh, when you combine exercise with healthy food and mindset and behavior change knowledge, then that results in a sustainable, healthier lifestyle and healthier weight. That's why in the Netherlands, uh, the, it's decided that this lifestyle intervention is um, partly paid by the health insurance, but only for people with obesity. So it's still a, a, a health, uh, and um, we call it curat curative, is that the right English name, I don't know, but it's not still a prevent prevention program because it's only available for people with 30 
plus BMI. Also, lifestyle medicine research in the Netherlands shows, and the Health Council shows that uh, with active living, healthier eating, and better coping with stress, more than 50% of the risk of disease can be diminished. So, and add up to that, uh, research, research among the, these are a few. Carol Dweck did a lot of work in that, Joseph Spencer also. And they prove that if people have the knowledge of what they call brainology, and that's just the basic knowledge of the function of the brain and what our, our, our mind is capable of and uh, results in, you can uh, significantly in increase intrinsic motivation to change. So, but we need to know more about that uh, working of our brain. So we thought it's time to put this knowledge into practice. And that's when we wrote the approach for the European project. And that's a new health 2022 project. These are the partners. And that's uh, Portugal, Belgium, Lit Lithuania, um, uh, Spain, Slovakia, uh, Slovakia, and Austria. And these are also the languages, including English and, uh, and Dutch the languages in which the program has been trans, uh, is going to be translated. What is it what we are going to do? We are going to uh, grab the first challenge and that's that knowledge and not only knowledge but understanding that healthy living recipe and uh, translate that into uh, what we can communicate with professionals and with consumers. Let me tell you a little bit more later. The challenge too is that lack of mind and brain literacy. Also on this topic, we are going to develop um, information, e-learning and a small um, a documentaries to uh, explain the, uh, uh, the intrinsic um, knowledge, the essential insights of these information. And the third challenge that the that's the obesogenic environment. We are part of the environment of the people who live in our in our region. So, and uh, in the Netherlands, three million people uh, come to uh, health clubs. So there's a lot of connection and there's a lot of possibility to um, work with essential insights and to give people essential insights. A little bit broader than just the uh, training and, and the activities. So the four pandemics and uh, working to a solution. We have to work on health literacy. So giving, uh, reaching out and giving people the insights of uh, healthy exercise, healthy food, but also mental health. So the brain literacy and we have to work on that supportive environment. These were our pillars where we started with. So we, uh, what we are going to develop, and it's already in development, so we call it the turning point for humankind. And that's the introduction video. Um, there are going to be three, three small documentaries, sort of video e-learning with the essential insights, so not only the tips, but the in, in insights behind it about exercise as medicine, food as medicine, and the brain as medicine. So healthy mindset, health mindset, that's going to be developed in six languages. An e-learning to become a healthy lifestyle promoter, an app with a healthy lifestyle scan. So, and this is all the information which is from World Health Organization, Health Council, so uh, scientific, scientifically all approved. Um, a YouTube channel where this is going to be put out open because it's all open and free to use. Knowledge center for the professionals and guidelines and tool for the professional to work with it with uh, clients or people in the own environment. So what we started with is to set up and de develop together with Europe Active uh, the Healthy Lifestyle Promoter um, uh, profile so the qualification on EQF level two um, to create a European network of healthy lifestyle promoters that's the idea and um, the people who are mostly in connection with people who want to live healthy are fitness trainers and personal trainers of course so can we 
um, inspire fitness trainers and personal trainers to also become lifestyle promoter, to have this basic knowledge on those three topics and not only on physical activity. In the, uh, in the second phase, we can also reach out from the in fitness industry to other sectors. So, and we are testing that in the Netherlands already. We make connection with the health practitioners, uh, with the education um, organizations, with companies, with uh, groups of volunteers. So, because they also can be that healthy lifestyle promote, promoter. And we can get a step further than that. And I think the other two projects will, uh, uh, the connection will be uh, very effective at the end. This is only to become the promoter and other um, uh, roles in the industry, which have also the connection, connection with the consumer can be that um, healthy lifestyle promoter too but we can bring it into the community. So we targeting directly to consumers is open for consumers also and to volunteer network, but the fitness professional will be the one who is putting it out and the fitness industry is the, is the network who's putting it out in, in, the, uh, in the field. So in our opinion and idea, the fitness industry will have the new role as healthy lifestyle and prevention industry of the future. And I don't know which other industry could take this role onto it. So together with the other projects, which we're here soon, um, and other sectors, we can create a European healthy lifestyle and prevention environment because the people, the professionals, all professionals could be a healthy lifestyle promoter or even more. And possible next development is a program for youth, for schools. We are testing this already in the Netherlands. A healthy aging program or um, in the next step, because this healthy lifestyle promoter is just someone who reaches out and gives the information which is developed and reaches um, out with the lifestyle scan. He is not an advisor, he is not a coach, so, um, but a role behind uh, and to develop further is the advisor or the coach, which um, uh, maybe is already developed. Let's hear what the other two speakers to say about that. So let's join forces, uh, that's our call and that's my presentation guys so let me stop sharing. thank you uh, thank you john that's uh, fantastic really interesting insight there uh, i think for me you know, the most in interesting point here with this with this role is that what you're talking about is a, a role that crosses sectors so you know if we're going to truly impact on some of those uh, pandemics you re referred to then then you know we need we need a network of people within our communities giving the right information, facilitating people to become active and to live a, a, a healthier lifestyle. And, and therefore, a lot of those people, I think, need to be drawn from that community. So, so mm -hmm. it could be volunteers, it could be people from the health sector, could be social workers, could be librarians, I don't know, but you give them the knowledge that they need to spread those messages and, and yeah, only just then to, to just add a little bit on that we have a lot of questions in the past years to make the connection with the healthcare uh, sector and uh, we are testing this in the past two years and with information and education uh, we can make that connection so we we are building a local network of with with the healthcare industry and with education because we are uh, uh, setting us in uh, in the field as the lifestyle uh, experts and and that's why we we can make that connection so it's also a tool to make the connection and build your local and national network absolutely yes definitely john yeah thank you and i think that that actually leads us quite 
well to um, to our next presentation. Just to emphasise, of course, that uh, John's um, John's project there, the New Health Project, and the development of that healthy lifestyle promoter role is is a project that Europe Active are, are actively involved in and supporting. Okay, so we'll move to our we'll move to our next speaker, uh, and that's uh, Colin Huffin from uh, Simpsba, the Register uh, of physical activity, fitness professionals, uh, probably saying the wrong thing there, Colin. Uh, but um, Colin's gonna talk about a role that they have uh, been developing in the UK, uh, which we would refer to, I believe, as a, as a health navigator. And really, I think we'll speak to that, to that desire to connect to the healthcare professions. So, Colin, I, I can leave it to you to introduce yourself a bit more and, uh, and to talk on that topic, please. Yes, thank you, Julian. I'll just share my screen. And good afternoon, everyone. I feel like I should apologise for my uh, untidy appearance, but just so you know, the, the UK barbers and, and hairdressers aren't yet open. So uh, I feel like my, most of us are in a similar position where we're, we're, we're worrying about our appearance uh, online. Um, so I'm, I'm very much there. But thank you to Julian for giving us the opportunity to share the work that we're doing as well. Um, we're always very keen to, uh, to share with, with partners um, the work that's going on. So yes, I work for, for Simspa, um, which is the Chartered Institute for, for um, the Management of Sport and Physical Activity. So we're a, a chartered body in the UK. We have some authority and some responsibility um, for fitness professionals. Um, so I'm going to talk about a little bit very quickly about who we are, just so, so we have some credibility with you guys. Um, and then I'm going to talk to you about our Health Navigator professional standard, um, how it was developed and who was involved, um, what Health Navigator can and can't do, so what are their scope of practice, and what are the Health Navigator's core knowledge and skills. Um, so here at Simspa, what we're, we're trying to do is create a recognised and respected profession um, that everyone wants to be part of in the UK. Um, basically, we want everybody who... Uh, who is in the UK to be part of the exercise and fitness sector and to come actively contribute to creating healthy lifestyles as well. So whether that's you, whether that's you are a member of SIMS or whether you just promote a physical activity message, um, we really want you, everyone to, to, to enable those healthy lifestyles to happen. Um, some of you may have heard of uh, UK reps or reps. I know that's quite prevalent across the rest of, of Europe. Um, We've, we are now working in partnership with UK reps and the only exercise and fitness register in the UK will be SIMSPA. Um, so all reps members are transferring in, into SIMSPA as of last Monday, I believe. So big news for us in the UK. Um, so if, just if you're wondering what SIMSPA do, just gives you a bit of background. Uh, my main role is um, to develop standards and education um, across the whole of the UK. So similar to Europe Active, um, in the UK we have a set of standards um, and we have a whole host of um, what we call award, UK awarding organisations who develop qualifications and then there's a whole network of training providers who deliver them. So um, it's my job to make sure that there's a standard and a consistency across every um, awarding organisation and every training provider that offers training in the UK. Um, so we do that by, as many other organisations do, as, as you work with Europe Active on in the main, in developing what we call professional standards. Um, we've got 35 professional standards already. Um, we've got them a whole, across a whole, whole host of topics. Um, and then what we do as an organisation is, is endorse and accredit um, training providers and awarding organisations who will offer qualifications and continual professional development against those standards as well. Um, but the standard I want to talk to you about today is the Health Navigator Standard. The Health Navigator Standard is, is, part, is one of um, three standards which we've developed to really help deal with um, an inactivity crisis we have which is obviously in the um, amongst the western world not not just limited to the uk um where we've identified very similar to john um that people in an, the active community um can play a role in, in supporting people to engage in, in better health better lifestyles and creating healthy habits you don't necessarily have to be a fitness instructor to deliver physical activity to do that um, a lot of people want to know what advice to give and they want to be given the right advice on how to create a healthy healthy lifestyle and healthy habit um, so that is health navigator people who want to know more and want to deliver um, 
physical activity um, to inactive people or people who have had um, long-term health conditions can do that as well. So they would need to be a, a coach or a personal trainer. Um, and we have two other standards. So working with inactive people and working with people with long-term conditions, um, which will enable them to, to learn more about um, people with specific health conditions in the long-term condition standard. Um, and then people who may just not, not be unhealthy, but have been inactive for a long time. So how do you engage with that type of person? And how do you make sure that your programming is, is appropriate for them? Um, but Health Navigator really is, is new for us. It's new for the UK. Um, but just to give you a bit of context around why it's needed, um, in the UK, the number of people living with three or more long-term conditions um, rose from 1.9 million to 2.9 million in, in, the, in a very short period of time, in 10 years. So um, similar to, to John's slides, um, we have a, a, large, a, a large inactive population which are becoming increasingly ill. Um, and obviously there's a burden upon the National, National Health Service and, and healthcare provision with that. Um, over the next 20 years, there's some predictions that obviously obesity is going to rise and we're going to have additional cases of, of uh, diabetes as well. Um, and there's a whole host of charities doing work out there to understand what the needs and, and the future, future modalities of the population will look like. Um, and we anticipate, as many others do in the Western world, that people will will live with and cope with lots of other debilitating diseases and will have multiple debilitating diseases over time. Um, so it's about, okay, well, that's going to lead to a new, there's a prevention and a cure. So obviously we're going to need, going to, need to try to prevent some of that, those things happening in future generations, but also we're going to need to, need to know how to cope with those people um, that want to improve, those, improve their lifestyle who may be in that sort of condition as well. Um, so what do health navigators do? What they don't do is they don't deliver physical activity. So that's often a, a misconception um, that actually you need to be able to deliver the activity to be able to, uh, to, to advise people on it. Now, we've, we're very much in the position in the UK that um, we don't think that's the case. We think there are lots of people out there who have a wider role to play within healthcare provision. Um, and everyone has the opportunity to, to learn more about how to, how to engage in health lifestyle and advise others to do that. Um, so what they do know how to do is, is very much around behaviour change. So that's a big element of the standard. Um, it's not just about having a single conversation. It's about making sure that every conversation you have um, really counts. So there's a, there's a phrase that the healthcare service uses in the UK and it's making every contact count. And that's the, the, the same philosophy that we want, we want to embed across all of our health navigators. That every time you have a conversation with somebody, it is, it is meaningful and it enables them to understand how they can lead, lead a better healthy lifestyle as well. Um, so as a result, they'll, they will demonstrate their ability to do that, but they'll also know their professional boundaries as well. It's really important that they don't start giving bad advice. That could be even worse um, than not giving any advice at all. Um, so we were very keen and spent lots of time really understanding that scope of practice and being very clear on, on, on what they, they should and what they shouldn't do. I think it's as important to know what you shouldn't do as to know what you should as well um, so as a result of, of any training that they may have done um, associated to this standard um, they will have the the ability to to have those meaningful conversations and allow people and engage people in, in in understanding how to have better um, healthy lifestyles and better habit and create better habits as well so it's not necessarily about a one-term one-time conversation around well you could go out for a walk it's about okay, well, these are the factors you need to consider to have a better healthy lifestyle and can I engage with you over a period of time to make sure that you do. And that is really the, the scope of this role. Um, so there, there, as, as John said, in, in very similar in the UK, we want to engage not just the health and fitness sector. That's quite easy for us. We can directly talk to those people. We have all the employers of, of health and fitness um, practitioners in membership with us, we have a database and a network of thousands and thousands and thousands of, of health and fitness practitioners. But again, we're, we're really preaching to the converted there. We're talking to people that already know a lot of this already, and it is in their interest in many cases to promote healthy lifestyles. Um, but what we want to do is have a, have a, have a, a much wider group of people who are out in, in the community, um, whether that be in a, in a hairdresser's or a supermarket or in a pharmacy. Um, 
people can start to talk to people about having those active lifestyles. And what I suppose an interesting example is, um, is the hairdressing example. So when we did some research um, into this um, with, with our partners, um, Sport England, they, they did um, some insight work to understand where people have meaningful conversations. And actually the hairdressers was one of the, was one of the, one of the areas of which, uh, not for everyone, don't get me wrong, um, but for some people, particularly females of a certain demographic, they would have quite a, a meaningful conversation uh, and strike up that reward. Well, if we can, every, if we've got a group of people that, that that appeals to, if we can train those professionals who who uh, are having those conversations to have conversations about healthy lifestyles, then fantastic. It can infiltrate from every single part of uh, of, of the community. Um, so there's pilot work, a pilot piece of work being considered there in terms of how we train other really um, not even healthcare associated um, professionals. So you could be in any, any other professional sector um, where you're going to have a conversation. You have the time to have a conversation with the general public. So um, there's that. And then there's some more structured approaches to that as well. So um, in England, um, sorry, in the UK, the health systems are devolved. So we have... Um, England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland taking responsibility for their their, their home country area. Um, so this this is a, an example of, of work that's gone on in England. There'll be a thousand uh, social social work social prescribing link workers in place. That's full time people um, who will be trained to understand and be embedded within the healthcare system about having um, healthy conversations and making sure that they can promote healthy lifestyles. That seems like a lot, but when you consider that's one to every 650,000 people, it's, uh, they're going to be busy. They're going to be having lots of conversations. Um, so that's, that's only really going to, to, uh, to scratch the surface. What we need to make sure is that we've got millions, hundreds of tens of thousands, millions of people that, that understand um, how to have better conversations about healthy lifestyles as well. Um, so there's, there's some, work, some work around that. And then on the, on the right-hand side of the slide there, you can see some other people that we're also trying to target. Um, to, to take this training um, and to understand how to have those, those conversations about healthy lifestyles um, in a very similar way to John. How can we access each different part of the community and make sure that, that everyone understands what, how to have those, those meaningful conversations? So the key topic here is the key knowledge and skills that health navigators will, will learn about and will be assessed upon. Um, so care, communication, creating relationships, um, very much creating a bond, how to have that meaningful conversation not a transactional conversation so it's not just you could go here and do this it's these are the reasons why you should go here and do this and this is the benefits it's going to have for you um so creating that behavior change model so understanding that yeah you, you don't just go and do that once you go and have a regular contact point with that person um and it's embedded in, in everything that they do what a health what a health and active lifestyle is um so what are the sorts of things that 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 you should be doing what does that include it includes obviously physical activity but nutrition and everything else that goes out around that as well where you can sign posts this, this has been a really big challenge for us um so obviously in a national standard we can outline the main areas of signposting but what's been really um the feedback we've had um throughout the process of developing the standard is that it's very much localized so um, people want to know actually where in a certain area I can access that type of activity. Um, and what we've, we're, tr we're doing alongside um, another group of partners is to make sure that there's, a, there's very much um, a activity map. So if you want to access these sorts of activities, there's the places that you go and do them. There's a, there's, in England, there's a, there's a piece of work being led by Sport England on that. So there should be one website to say, you want to play badminton, you go here, you want to play netball, you go there, you want to do this, you go there. And here's the people that will support you through that, through that process as well. And then their own professional skills and boundaries as well. So um, as I said at the start, it's very much um, understanding what, what, where, you're, where you're passing people over and where you are, what you are able to do and what you aren't able to do. It's not a case of, oh, well, I can help you with that and I can also deliver the physical activity. I'm going to come with you. Um, that's not what we're expecting a health navigator to do. We're expecting them to signpost out to the appropriate professional who understands their needs. But they may be able to pass them on with a bit of a, an understanding of, of that person um, to the fitness professional to say, actually, here's some information about this person which may, may enable you to program better as well and understand their needs 
and save you some time in doing that, those initial um, first key contacts and screenings as well. So yes, yeah, so I'm not going to go in any further than that. Hopefully that, that gives you a broad overview of, of that role. Um, just, to, just to finish, if you, all of our professional standards are, are open on, on our website. So if you want to look at the detail in, in, in any further, you don't even need to ask permission. You can just go onto our website and download it as a, as a PDF. That, that, that's open and available for anybody to use. And we're keen to share. We're also here if you want to ask any questions about any of that as well. Um, we're, we're very open, open and, and, uh, and who doesn't like to talk about the great work that's going on in your own, in your own country as well. So thank you, Julian. I'll finish there. Thanks, Colin. Uh, yeah, fantastic. A lot of, lot of um, parallels there with, with John's work, uh, really widening out that network even further. Uh, great to hear you talking about hairdressers <laughs> and supermarkets and pharmacies <laughs> and all these situations where those conversations could be had. Um, yeah, I've come across that phrase, making every contact count. And, and I guess if we're going to put this message out there, we, we, we need uh, to take those opportunities and make those contacts count. Uh, meaningful con conversations. That was, that was another phrase that you used, I think, which is, um, uh, which is something uh, to take on board and, 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 and speaks to the, to the fact that, yeah, we're, we're talking about behavior management here. So a big aspect of that is going to be how, uh, how individuals uh, communicate how those health navigators or healthy lifestyle promoters com uh, communicate, uh, which I think brings us quite nicely to the last uh, presentation uh, from my good friend Alfonso uh, down in Spain, GoFit, uh, because uh, Alfonso uh, and GoFit have been uh, developing another role, which they refer to as a uh, health and happiness uh, advisor. Great, great title, love it. Um, and um, a big part of that, I know for sure, is health counselling skills. So again, speaking to that communication point of view, that making every contact count. So, Alfonso, uh, over to you. You're on mute, I think, Alfonso. Okay. Are you still on mute, Alfonso? Now. Okay. Now is good. Now is good. Hola, buenos días a todos. And let me share the screen with you. Okay. Uh, and see how this works. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Bueno, thank you very much. I think that. Um, we have already two very interesting um, contributions. Um, here we are going to get into a practical uh, proposal that is already uh, happening in GoFit, uh, level of training. And basically we couldn't implement this because of the coronavirus crisis and the centers closed, you know. Um, we are reopening part of our operations tomorrow in Portugal, in, in areas in the south and north of Spain. And hopefully from the 22nd of um, June, we will be fully operational, okay? The idea, the idea in our case was to build a particular um, group of capabilities in our workforce to improve health counseling skills, okay? Um, we discussed extensively already about this this morning, you know, but physical inactivity you know, is a challenge. Uh, this is for adult people across the world, okay, more dramatic in children and adolescents population, absolutely dramatic, you know, uh, and I think that is a challenge for all of us, and we as an industry should be able to do something meaningful about, okay. Um, if we um, identify these two uh, critical elements with the existing uh, change in our behavior as a result of the coronavirus crisis, and this is data from the end of March, you know, from this um, study of the Fitbit guys that basically reported what the, the levels of activity of people um, were reduced as a result of the lockdown in a, in a number of countries around the world, you know. But the interesting thing, and a lot of research has been published in the last month or so, about this interaction between two existing 
pandemics right now. The inactivity pandemic linked, as, as John referred to, cardiovascular and metabolic disorders massively, and the current and specifically future consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic, okay? is going to increase dramatically the impact of non-communicable diseases, uh, and we should be able to step up uh, and show our capability to be part of the solution, you know? In fact, I would like to shortly uh, refer to a report that we will be publishing tomorrow um, at our um, Europactive newsletter in which we try to um, discuss about a new role, value and impact of a proactive and more responsible health and fitness industry, you know? And for us to be more responsible is to show our economic and social impact, uh, but as well to be able to interact better and influence better the world around us, okay? And in this particular uh, area, we focus in improving our health counseling skills in our staff. No? So we did a benchmark across the world. We identified a particular role in the NHS in, in, in England, you know, what is called the health trainer, you know? Basically, it's a role to offer practical support to people uh, to change behavior and achieve their own health goals, you know? Uh, and we focus specifically in the areas of regular exercise and, and healthy nutrition and healthy eating. And we build a simple but very applied curriculum of education as a CPD for all the staff in the GoFit workforce, okay? The idea is avoiding the traditional way in which we expect people to follow health behaviors, okay? That is basically just blaming them. You should be doing this or you should be doing that and you are doing it wrong, you know? The idea is to turn around this traditional approach, you know, into a more proactive one in which we recognize our new role to be played you know, as our, um, you know, health and happiness advisors. We define GoFit as a happiness company. Our, our main mantra is happiness is trainable as well on the, other, on the idea that we create ecosystems that promote active living where the individual will rediscover the natural pleasure of movement. You know? So it's about happiness and enjoyment. It's not about uh, blaming people for not being active. Okay? So how we could move in our approach our existing capabilities and skills to effectively become proactive facilitators of a transformational journey of our members, no? people that are facing a number of challenges across the journey, moving from inactivity into activity, and automatically open new behaviors um, to be developed by our staff, you know, individuals able to effectively inform people about the consequences of unhealthy decisions on a daily basis so they can make informed decisions on a daily basis as well improving capacity and skills of our people to educate people about basic content and concepts john was referring that 90 percent of people they don't have any 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 health literacy so they cannot effectively operate improving their health you know very important the ability to to question individuals to make uh, proper questions in a non-transactional non environment, as, as Colin was referring to as well, you know, able to transfer knowledge from science and evidence in coming from research in a way that everybody could be able to understand, supporting the journey as a facilitator, justifying potential decisions or addressing barriers, etc., working around their reasoning and explaining a positive narrative about why they have to be active and how to do it, but as well supporting in a very um, emotional and close way, way. And finally, bringing to our people and our workforce to think about the needs of the individual and, and, you know, and develop specific skills about the proactive uh, listening and how to identify the key drivers of a potential change in the behavior of an individual, just thinking on what the person is telling me and what this means really, you know? So, uh, and finally, allowing our people to grow as professionals uh, as we, uh, you know, take on board these new capabilities and skills, you know? Um, our 
And method of intervention is based in four pillars, exercise, nutrition, recovery, and motivation. So the idea that we have to address these four pillars in this counseling role, okay? Uh, from very basic stuff in each of the areas, uh, focusing, for example, in how do we increase physical activity, you know, how we can discuss about the impact of transport, of the environment, how we can have opportunities to move in the workplace, how we can effectively use our leisure centers and our sports and recreation programs, or how we interact with our health uh, and social care uh, professionals. Very important. The key message that we are trying to um, uh, um, implement in our people and our members is focusing just if you move, you will reduce the risk of mortality and you will increase your life expectancy. You know, this is the main driver regarding um, uh, physical activity and exercise promotion. You know, now there is an element of the caveat that is that if you at the same time increase your physical activity level in a sustainable way, you will re you will reinforce your new function, so you will be in a better position in case you face COVID-19, okay? But the main message is about the impact on improving quality of life and life expectancy regarding physical activity, okay? Uh, if we focus in nutrition, we focus in, in, in very few messages that everybody can understand and implement in recovery and rest, sleeping hours that you need, and in the motivation, very basic stuff as well, okay? Um, the model that we have developed is a very simple one, you know, in which everybody, uh, managers, customer experience teams, or exercise professionals go through a CPD training that is delivered mainly online through our GoFit University intranet platform, you know, where we analyze the content and these new responsibilities, and we provide our staff with the underpinning knowledge per pillar with additional content updated now for safety and protective policies and guidelines regarding COVID-19, because it's one of the key elements is about risk perception of people when they are back to physical activity and exercise in our centers. And this online delivery is following a face-to-face -face training when we work specifically in the communication skills in a competence-based education, individuals learning by doing, you know, and the program incorporated a final assessment that involved a role play and an assessment of positive attitudes on the idea that all the staff in GoFit finally will become a positive role model for members and the community. Okay? The program goes through an, an assessment uh, for a certificate of completion from our academic main local partner, Universidad Rey Juan Carlos, in Madrid, the Center of Sports Studies. So, you know, when the individual complete the training, they receive a certificate and when they are interacting with members, for example, in the uh, introduction to the service, etc., the certificate of the individual is shown uh, on the walls and the members can rely on, on the skills uh, and the level of confidence increase, you know, so I think that is important that at the same time, there is an element of, of, of independent accreditation of our uh, achievements, you know. Um, the program is uh, currently delivered online for our staff, uh, and we are hoping that as soon as we are moving into reopening and interacting again with our members, we will be able to see the impact of, of this coming. You know, um, this element of visibility linked with our uh, final slide that uh, you know is something that should be in your COVID-19 to-do list. Okay, as we discussed in the previous webinar as well. Um, we need you guys to join the reps if you are not already a member of the register, okay? Because visibility is the step one for credibility. If we are going to take new roles uh, supporting people in a transformational journey to integrate healthy lifestyles, it's important that we get the proper recognition uh, and visibility for this. Um, so I encourage you to become a member of our European Register of Exercise Professionals, okay? And from my side, that's it. If you have to reach me, you have my contact details here. Um, thank you very much, Julian, for the invitation. Looking forward for your questions. Thanks. Lovely, Al Alfonso. Uh, thank you. Uh, and thank you for that uh, support for Europe. Much appreciated. Um, yeah, in interesting to see the, the development of a, of a very similar role there, but in, a, um, in an operator context. 
uh, within a within an actual within an actual gym. And, and I guess that's that was one of the thoughts that I had. I, I, I know John and I have had conversations on this. That um, yes, of course, we can train up people from the community, and that is, I think that's just so great. That's fantastic. Uh, but um, we're also looking to offer these qualifications to to fitness professionals, to existing fitness professionals, to fitness instructors, and to personal trainers. Um, so I, I just wanted to ask, really, uh, why we feel that that's necessary. Do we feel that this is offering them additional skills that, that, that they don't already have? Will it have value to those professionals as well? I'm not sure he wants to speak to that. Yeah, um, I think most personal trainers and uh, fitness trainers already receive uh, every day questions about health, lifestyle, uh, some conditions of, of people. And maybe 15, 20 years ago, that fitness trainer was just a fitness trainer, but that's, uh, that's already a long time ago. Only the, the, the knowledge of providing with the uh, high quality answer that is not updated and this information is available so that's a wonderful connection to make to put this information uh, actually to make this the, the fitness industry as the spokesperson of the healthy living guidelines of the world health organization and the health council and all the guidelines Thank you, John. No, absolutely, I, I, I totally agree. And, and Alfonso, you obviously see that because you're you're, you're putting your your people through that in GoFit, yes. Now the question is that you know, so when you realize the challenges that people in active are facing when they try to change their lives, you know, um, it's not just a question of, of the exercise dose or the exercise mode or the frequency of the practice, you know. They are asking us for more. They are asking for support. They are. They want to learn. They want to understand why they have to do a number of things. What uh, um, and in our value proposition, I think that is critical that we are able to, you know, to to go further in the way in which we became um, proactive facilitators or mentors in this transformational journey. You know, um, because if not, we will only reach those who are already highly motivated. You know. And the ones that are highly motivated and the ones that are already active, and to be fair, they don't need us. We, we, you know, we, as an industry, we have to shit to the people that are totally disconnected from physical activity because it's where the main risk of, of inactivity lies. And these individuals are not expecting um, 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 an exercise professional just discussing just about the exercise physiology elements of the intervention, which are really important. Yeah, but there are other elements around that probably will support easier and better at the individuals at the beginning. Yes, uh, yeah, I, I totally agree. And, and I guess listening to you talk there, Alfonso, you know, you were talking about moving away from, you know, that, that blame culture and uh, in some way inferring that it, it may be a person's fault. We're moving towards more empathetic skills yeah. where we're handing control. Uh, to the actual, uh, to the client, to the to the inactive person, so that they can uh, communicate. The communication is not all one way. It's not from the instructor uh, telling; it's the instructor listening. Uh, so that's uh, that's a, I think a little bit of a shift, maybe for, for some uh, and for for our workforce in terms of the way they think. Um, okay, fantastic. Somebody has asked a question here. Um, what are the greatest challenges that, that you are facing to make this way of working a reality? And maybe Colin, you could talk to that a little bit because obviously you're engaging with the health sector here. Uh, there's some, uh, uh, I, I'm sure you have something to say on that. Yeah, definitely. Um, one of the challenges that, that we, we found in the UK is, is the um, additionality to somebody's job that this becomes um, and the people seeing that it's important. I think we've got a lot of work to do in the UK to make sure the decision makers understand how important it is that people do have healthy and active lifestyles. <laughs> so um, if, we can, if we can win the battle with the decision makers, then they can make that part of somebody's job and they can allocate funding towards it and allocate time in people's day to make it necessary. I think that's, yes. that's really, one of the challenges in the UK, and also we have quite a fragmented healthcare system as well. The the the, the 
the alliance of healthcare and for sport and physical activity aren't always completely aligned. Um, they're very two separate systems. Um, so healthcare and funding for healthcare prevention work um, is, is quite limited in the UK. It's, 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 we spend all of our, our money in the NHS fixing people rather than um, helping them before they become unwell. Yes, absolutely. Um, yes. Uh, trying to cure rather than trying to prevent, I yeah. guess, is, is, uh, is the key there. Uh, some interesting things coming in on questions and some, some general statements. Somebody saying that here in the US, uh, we um, do a similar thing with, with church uh, leaders uh, to give out these, these kind of messages. So that's an interesting, interesting one to think about. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I just wanted to ask as well. Um, let me just have a, I'm just going to open up the questions. Oh, this is an interesting one. How can poor people who do not find food, uh, uh, I think that's quality f f food, uh, implement such standards without government support? So that's, that's a really interesting question, isn't it? Because it sort of speaks maybe a little bit to that health inequalities side of things. So I don't know if somebody wants to pick up on that. Well, John. Oh, Colin. Uh, just well, my Colin, my, Colin or John? Uh, and my and my answer to that would be, it's a difficult one, but um, that's one of the reasons w w we decided to put this information out for free, not only for the professional but also for the consumer. So everyone uh, doesn't matter who, uh, what. Uh, social level they live can access this information uh, but uh, it still is a big problem that the healthy food is more expensive of course than the unhealthy food i mean that's something with uh, which is going to be uh, an issue for governments to uh, look into so okay yeah yes Sorry. i mean yeah. I, I guess Part of this as well, I, Colin, I think you've got something to say, but part of this as well is, I mean, the whole purpose, I think, of the original health trainer role in the UK was to try and reach out to some of uh, those um, less accessible groups, some of those groups that really weren't interacting uh, with, with, a, with a healthy lifestyle, um, some of those groups who maybe didn't have access to gyms or quality food or, or, or whatever that may be. That was very much the intention. So I guess... Mm. We would hope that this role by training up people from those communities could impact on that. Colin? Yeah, thanks Julian. Yeah, exactly that. that's what I was going to say. So we do have massive um, health inequalities in the UK and across most of the Western world. Um, I think nutrition is only one element to the health navigator aspect. Um, physical activities is obviously the one, the one element that we're also aiming to promote as well. Um, and interestingly, there's been lots of insight. I mean, we're all um, inundated with surveys at the moment throughout the pandemic um, and we are seeing increases in daily physical activity um, I think it's because we, we've been limited in terms of our access to it so now we've been told we can't do it everybody wants to do it um, and so it will be yeah. interesting to see whether that, that has an in, had an impact on um, communities that don't normally uh, have, the, have the ability to access physical activity as well. Yeah absolutely would be uh, would be very interesting to see that uh, you know I'm sure we've all seen um, lots of people out that perhaps haven't been out engaging in phys physical activity previous to all of this. Um, there was a question actually, uh, Colin, uh, whether the health uh, navigator role has actually been tested with hairdressers yet. You know, that's obviously stimulated a bit of interest. Yeah, not with hairdressers yet. So the, the social, prescri social prescribing um, role I mentioned, the thousand people that um, the NHS are funding are being trained on, on health navigation at the moment. Um, so the, the standards that the healthcare system are using are aligned to the standards that the fitness sector have, have created. Um, but yeah, there are some some plans for pilots in that area. They haven't yet started yet, but obviously, if people want to engage with us, we'll 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 tell you how it goes as as we do it. Okay, lovely. Yeah, well, we'll all be interested to hear the results of that. Um, Alfonso, did you have something to add there? Uh, well, I think that uh, it's especially important that uh, these uh, new roles 
will potentially and effectively change the external perception of the capability of the industry to become an effective partner of the public health agenda. You know? And I think that is, uh, and, and I think that is a significant move for, for our industry because it will change the perception of policymakers, it will change the perception of in the interaction with other sectors, especially the healthcare sector and the social care uh, sector, you know, and will help us to really interact with government in a different way, you know, in which we, we, we could effectively influence decisions about regulations regarding food quality. Uh, a clear example is the food labeling program in, in UK, you know, referring the content of the food linking to the level of physical activity in some areas probably too much instrumental not very uh, um, effective um, but very clear that there is a relationship between what you are eating and the quality of the food and the amount of energy that you will need to counterbalance this okay um, and i think that this kind of, of of roles will open us to a different discussion um, with the stakeholders, with governments, uh, and with the public. And I think that it's important that we make this as visible as possible as well. You know? uh, yes, I think uh, visibility and, and I think credibility is is the key here, isn't it? Really, in, in terms of you know, if we are going to engage uh, with the healthcare sector, with public health, and be seen as a, a credible partner to those sectors, then as a as a as an industry, we 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 need to. Uh, professionalize ourselves and and it was interesting actually Colin looking at your progression through from health navigator to you know the, the next set of standards working with active people and then long-term conditions so you have a pathway there of education uh, a, a pathway of education that is mirrored I think by the Europe active standards as well in terms of that progression um, from up the levels, but in, in terms of those in terms of those roles, uh, and we have to have uh, our fitness professionals working within those established pathways uh, and and qualified at the appropriate level and working within their scope of practice. Then we start to gain the credibility as a sector that we need. But I think what we've been hearing today, I think, is is fantastic. I think this is this is such a hugely important role. Something that I was involved in, with. Uh, many years ago and uh, it's great to see it now starting to come to fruition. I think what all of you guys are doing is, is fantastic work and so important if we're going to get those uh, those health and well-being messages out to, and reach those groups whether that's somebody uh, uh, you know those, those people suffering from health inequalities or whether that's general population who's just simply not engaging with our sector uh, we need to get those messages out. We We can all become highly qualified in this industry and that's great and we need those highly qualified and skilled people but we also need a lot of people out there giving the the the, the right messages and reaching out into our communities and i think all of these roles speak to that uh, so fantastic thank you all for your input great to see all these roles developing would be great if we can now coordinate all of these roles and talk together and and develop together as an industry so thanks everybody for your time. Thanks, thanks Colin, thumbs up. Thanks John, fantastic. Thanks as ever Alfonso, uh, and thanks to everybody for attending. All right, Goodbye. great, thank you. Have a good day. Bye bye.